We've watched a lot together over the years, a lot of different experiences of watching stuff. That's why we wanted to do the channel, but I don't think anything has ever been like that. Uh, just completely end out of nowhere, like on a cliffhanger to where we were both so shocked. Yeah, no, I can't think of anything like that. Just wanting so much more out of it. Like it was right there and like everything with the character development throughout the whole thing is just amazing. And I, I just can't wait for it. Yeah, I know they fit so much in somehow. And yet when it ended, I felt like there was still a, a whole another half to go. And I was like, I want to watch it right now. But, you know, we couldn't. Right. So that was pretty crazy. I still, to this day, I mean, we're like six years later. I mean, to end Infinity War like that was nuts. I think that's still why it's considered one of the best MCU movies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No doubt. Okay. Uh, but are you ready to talk about this episode? They're the most powerful force in the universe. Now the Borg had the most destructive plan ever to conquer the human race. You have committed acts of aggression against the United Federation of Planets. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to pause it real quick. <laughs> Are they going to show Picard as the Borg? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> they have to. Th there's no doubt. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, they are. They are. I wouldn't be surprised if it showed the literal end with <laughs> fire. Okay, here we go. Target one. The Enterprise. Directed. Deck 9. Jordy, evacuate engineering. Target 2. Captain Picard. Your culture will adapt to service hours. We would rather die. The final target. Earth. Earth. On the next exciting episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Credit to them. Credit to the restraint. And uh, they finally decided to... Uh... Put some uh, some title cards on there. It's like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, that's neat. And they finally figured out maybe we shouldn't give away so much in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just thinking. Um, we were both wrong. Uh, maybe I missed it, but I don't think they said anything about it being the season finale. I know different time, but uh, I thought maybe there was a chance that they'd be like on the season conclusion or like something along those lines. But it didn't seem like it. Yeah, no, that might have been the best teaser ever. I got to give them credit for not showing. I 100% saw. They show him get kidnapped, but, you know, that that's a fine teaser thing. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's fine. And with the steps, uh, target one, the Enterprise. Target two. It's like, oh, that's great. And then three with the, the voice, Earth, Earth. It's like, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. But anyway, I think it's time we discuss this uh, Star Trek episode. Can this be possibly one? Well, we won't answer this first question. One of the best episodes of the season, and two, the best Star Trek season finale ever. Yeah, uh, so I'll start obviously with the second one. Uh, I think it's undoubtedly the best one. I think its only competition is Operation Annihilate, the Star Trek TOS season one finale, uh, which I think is kind of underrated because it had to follow City on the Edge of Forever. Um, but at the end of the day, Operation Annihilate is just like a solid one with some cool moments. This, I think, is obviously much different, uh, and I do think overall it's better. So, yeah, I, I would definitely say so. You're going to hate me, but because of the title, just give me a quick four-second reminder of what happens in Operation Annihilate. All right, I'm going to give you a put – your, put your timer on. I'm going to give you an eight-second recap of Operation Annihilate. And go. They go down to the planet where Kirk's brother is dead. There's the little amoeba-type monsters that look like puke. Spock goes blind, but then they fix it at the very end because he has two eyelids. You didn't even need to go that far. As soon as you said the Amoeba plan, I'm like, oh, that one. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, if I forget something, I just need one little nugget of information. It's like, oh, yeah, that one. This is a good transition. But what about the episode title, The Best of Both Worlds? Yeah, I'm guessing they mean because it's the Borg and Picard coming together? I can't imagine what else it could mean. Yeah, because I don't think it's about Riker, because uh, Riker's still there. He hasn't left to be a captain at all. At all. Well, well, the best of both worlds, he is acting captain because Picard's away. Yeah, no, I think it's just the best of, you know, the Enterprise and the Borg. And yeah, it's got to be Q. It's got to be that. It's got to be Picard. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's, you know, one of the best titles. It's fine. I mean, I, what is a good, what even makes a good title? I think the episode makes the title. The champion makes the title, right? The title doesn't make the champion. That's right. That's right. All right. I, I almost don't want to, like, I want to keep putting it off, like, going yeah. into it, you know what I mean? That's how I felt about watching it, too. Yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, once we start, that's it, you know what I mean? It's like uh, saying goodbye to someone at an airport, you know what I <laughs> It's like, just delay that, that feeling as much as possible. But no, this, uh, this episode was fantastic, great, a nice slow build to 
an amazing final 20 minutes that had me on the edge of my seat. And when it ended like it did, I was, I love when it, an ending can make you feel like that. Just bring out that, oh, fuck you. God, damn, you know, it's like, how did you do that? How can you do that to us? Like, I, we haven't had a cliffhanger in uh, TNG, right? Uh-uh. Ever? And, oh, God, it's, oh, just drop the mic. Screw yeah, it. I think a quick thing to really answer is, does the episode need the cliffhanger or does it um you know only work because of the cliffhanger and i say no i think it's a great episode even before the cliffhanger yeah uh and then the cliffhanger is just like its own novel thing you would agree yeah yeah this episode could have just been Riker's story about wanting to stay on the enterprise or go to another ship the borg stuff was great i loved all that but they could have easily just made that the episode and maybe like a smaller B plot and like could have done something, but also it works really well with this episode too. I'm just saying it could have been, like yeah. I, I didn't need the whole cliffhanger with the Borg thing. Yeah. My, I'm saying the other stuff was enough that it could have been its own episode. I'm glad they exist together mm-hmm. is, is what I'm saying. Yeah. My, yeah, definitely. My point was, it's not as if this was a C tier episode and then the cliffhanger, you know, brought it up. Yeah. Uh, right. And just for the record, I would say the same thing about Infinity War, but we're not talking about that. <laughs> but uh, I do feel like there was a, a really good episode in here, and then it got, you know, this cliffhanger. Obviously, they decided, we're going to make this a, a two-parter. I don't know the, any of the behind-the-scenes at all. The uh, people are becoming more self-aware. It's like, you know what? Like, they're aware that the season two finale was a dud, and other season finales have been, been a dud. So in their boardroom meeting, they said, what if we... Made a great episode. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Let him finish. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what a surprise that a season has never ended on a cliffhanger of any Star Trek show, right? So, and maybe uh, ser- uh, serialized television was p- becoming more popular at the time. And you know what would be a really good hook to bring people back for season four? Because maybe at that time they're still thinking, oh, season one and two aren't doing so well. I- I'm not sure. But if we end it on this crazy cliffhanger where Picard is now an enemy, it's like people are going to be sitting in their chairs for months waiting for this. I I don't know. Yeah, and uh, we'll talk more about our predictions of how it might get followed up in the season four premiere uh, later. But to jump into the episode itself, I think the number one thing we got to talk about is actually Riker, who uh, is not really, well, he is part of the cliffhanger, but, you know, the episode is essentially a Riker episode, Mm -hmm. which are rare. And when they happen recently, they're uh, really good. Um, earlier in the series, you know, you had some that weren't the strongest. Worth Riker is, you know, the main character while we still had Old Man Picard. Uh, but in the last couple of seasons, you know, Matter of Honor, the Klingon episode with him, um, among others, that's the one that sticks out. Not the best episode, but the Icarus Factor with his dad. Like, I still liked that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I loved Jonathan Frakes going into the show. But I, I do think it is safe to say for Jonathan Frakes, for Riker, this is probably his best showing so far because it shows the weakness. It's not just, you know, matter of honor. He's basically just a badass the whole time. It shows the weakness here and, and the struggle even all the way up till the end. Yeah, all of his episodes have shown that he's like the guy. Even back to uh, that season one episode where the guy goes to swing his neck mm-hmm. and you know stops right here. Matter of honor. The Klingons, like everything's been showing... That he's a go, he's a guy, and he's a go getter. And then, but him on the Enterprise, he's not almost become complacent. Like he's not go getting anymore. He's not. He's kind of just comfortable in his role. And for the first time, to see him in a vulnerable state, talking to Troy, best person to talk to, one counselor, two. Well, let's flip those. One because, uh, I mean, they've been intimate together, and they're basically friends with benefits. And two, she's a ship's counselor, so double works there. And to see him like with that look of concerned look on his face was so surprising because 95 percent of the time whether it's an episode about him or he's just standing in the background it's smirking at something so seeing that vulnerable side of him and, and uh shelby coming in and just like shh, 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 with one of the most uncomfortable scenes where i thought like a fight was going to break out in that elevator yeah this might be my favorite Riker episode yeah and you know i think it was perfect timing too because Riker could you know, really use a little bit of a 
<clears throat> you know, ego deflation or like to be made uncomfortable because, you know, I think recently episodes, you know, like Hollow Pursuits, the holodeck episode where he just comes off as a, a bully, you know, who's number one, uh, in my opinion, or, uh, in recent episodes, he, he has become what he thinks, you know, uh, here in this episode, he's just comfortable. He knows he's the number one right under the captain, but he doesn't have to be the one making the hard decisions. He doesn't have to be the one with all the responsibility. So he just comes off as this more like cool, I'll do whatever I want, I'm a badass guy. And Shelby coming in, I think, was a great addition to kind of be like, you might think you are compared to other people on this ship, but like, you're getting old. Like, I'm the young one now. I'm the one doing the risky moves. And Picard even says, when Riker describes it to him, he's like, sounds like a young uh, lieutenant I made first officer. Like, she is Riker, but younger. What'd you think of Shelby? I... I really like Shelby. Yeah, usually characters that come in all bold and brazen and like, oh, I'm the, you know, I usually don't, you know, especially in Star Trek when someone comes in, cuts someone off. You've heard my whole <laughs> yeah, spiel yeah. about that. I wondered if that was going to bother you. It didn't. No, I really like Shelby. I don't know what it was. And uh, it was slow. It was small things, like just going to the planet first before them. It's like, oh, uh, oh, it seems we are, <laughs> it seems Shelby's tardy. No, nah, they've been down there for an hour. It's like, <laughs> it's like, hey, come here. <laughs> And uh, just little things that brings Riker to a boiling point to where they're in the, the engineering room, the, the side engineering room, and they're trying to figure out a discussion or a solution. <laughs> and she says one thing. Riker's like, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's Go like, to bed. He's like, no. Go to, we're not doing that. And then also the, uh, the, the one where she brings up the separating the saucers. And Riker's like, I take all the alternatives to the captain. And she just goes right around him. Oh, that was a great shot, too. I'm glad he brought that up because <laughs> Picard's just sitting there like, <laughs> like, it shows, I think it shows Riker outside the door and it cuts to uh, Picard in there. Come. <laughs> it's like, what is he smiling at the wall? Because you thought no one was there. <laughs> yeah. And he was just, I thought it was just him by himself. <laughs> like, that's what he does. He's not reading or anything. Just... Yeah. And just like, but it was a great camera shot. Cliff Bowl, where it's like, to uh, Shelby sitting in the chair. I'm like, oh, God, that's tense. Elizabeth Dennehy, who plays Shelby, I thought did a great job. Uh, and I hope she continues to be in the show because it's, first of all, it's a to-be-continued. It'd be kind of weird if she was just gone. Yeah, it just wasn't in the second part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lieutenant Shelby has been picked up you know, during the, the opening <laughs> captain's log for another mission. But we still need to get Picard back. Wait, it's still Picard. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Oh, it's Lacutus doing. Yeah, doing the, the, the captain's log. Lacutus, captain's log. I, I have engaged the, the USS Enterprise. Yeah, and uh, he goes, "We've eliminated Shelby." How did that happen? <laughs> um, but no, I, 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 I'm not going to say at any point like I was bought in that Riker was going to become captain and she was going to take his place in this episode. But I don't know. I don't know what their intention is with her, or if she's just going to be this one-off. I don't know. Just a tool to push, you know. To push him? To, uh, yeah, push his character forward, I guess. But I'm guessing William... Well, I'm, guess, I'm guessing Riker's in the rest of the show. I'm assuming he doesn't leave, so I, I just wonder how they wrap it up with a nice button. Because I was going to say this, I think, during the poker scene, but then I didn't want to interrupt the scene too much. You know, it could be, like when Jim left the office and went to another branch and then we followed that other branch with him for a little bit, they could do something like that where he goes to another ship and he's not like a big part of every episode, but we're jumping back and forth. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen either. But it, it could be a possibility. Now they would have to eventually wrap that off and go. he goes back some, for some reason. But yeah, I, I obviously I don't think he's leaving the show either. If they stick with a serialized or a slowly dip in their their legs into serialized fashion. I could see maybe season four, episode one or two, where he does leave. We cut back to him a little bit. Maybe there's something, 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 something happens. Oh, we need help. Oh, we're about to, something happens. Oh, there's one to beam over from the other ship helping. And, you know, Riker like beams in. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, or literally uh, another office reference, but a shorter arc when Dwight quits, when Dwight quits and then works at Staples. And it's like one episode, <laughs> yeah. and you just see scenes of him at Staples, like unrelated, and then he, you know, comes back to the office. But uh, I don't think they're going to do any of that, unfortunately. I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know if it would work out or not. But it is kind of weird that, like, they make it such a big deal, and we're, you know, now in the future we know this, that we're not even halfway through this series. So it's like, 
how is he just going to go back to being number one and, and like, settle with that the rest of the series? I, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, with Wesley, it makes sense. You can make him an acting ensign, but you can't push Riker up anymore unless you just create a new position. And even then, he'd just be doing the same thing. Like, you know what I mean? If, they, if, he stays yeah. on, if he stays on the ship? Yeah, he can't. The only other way around would be Picard doesn't come back, and then Riker is the captain. That's not happening, obviously. So it, it's tough because I love this growth. I love this has been brought up. And the details like, oh, we turned down the captain's chair three times. And Shelby's like, oh, everyone's moving on up and you're standing still. It's like, mm, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. But it's, and if, it's, if, if it's this dynamic for four more seasons, it's like, what do they do? You know, they, they, yeah. they, I don't think they can bring it up again. I don't know how it resolves, but they can't bring it up again if that's the case, if they stay the same. Yeah, I think this is probably leading into our like prediction of what's going to happen, so I won't say much more. But the one thing I will say real quick on that is I'm not necessarily, I'm not only saying from a 2024 perspective, I know Picard's not gone. Like, that's not what I mean. I mean, even airing at the time, uh, again, another, you know, parallel to Infinity War, when Infinity War happened, as crazy as that ending was. I knew Black Panther and Spider-Man weren't dead forever. Like, it's the same thing here. I know Picard's not just going to be a Borg character forever. Uh, Locutus. Locutus. So, I just, I'm just i a smart enough audience member to know that. So, uh, it's not just that I know the show has seven seasons. Um, with that being said, what's Riker going to do? That's very good. I'm very mo probably most curious out of anything else how they're going to handle his character now that they've decided to bring this up. I don't know. I'm excited. I, I trust the show, obviously. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do. Wouldn't it be funny if the season four opener was just a completely unrelated episode? Episodic. <laughs> yes, it's to be continued. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, they do they do close this off, but it's, like, episode seven, and then, like, people will comment, like, well, they, actually, they did shoot them back to back, but they just decided to air it in this order. Uh, that'd be terrible. <sighs> that would be. Start with episode seven. And then us, headstrong. No, really sort of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Back to the episode. Uh, so Shelby, Riker, those are really the main points. Uh, awesome seeing the Doctor from Battlestar Galactica, the original. I can't, can't believe you called that. Dude, that guy's so distinctive. I was like, immediately. I haven't watched BSG, the original BSG, in forever. One um, year. Yeah. One year's a long time. It's, yeah. Uh, no, I'm just saying, ironically, it's been like exactly one year. Oh, really? Yeah. Really, yeah. And I would love to rewatch it, like, on a TV instead of a... Because we watched it on... I watched it on my laptop. You watched it on your... Computer, yeah. yeah. So maybe that's why. If his face was a bit smaller, maybe <laughs> I'd recognize him. But no, crazy to see him. And great Starfleet character, by the way. Uh, not too brash, uh, brazen, or, you know, ah, you know. It's like, he's just a nice guy. And, uh, like, yeah. And the typical Star Trek. Yeah, they're the only ship close. Man. It's always the Enterprise, right, right, right space at the right time. Yeah, and how he brings up actually valid concerns about Riker not wanting to move on to Captain. He's like, we've given him the chance three times. And I love his line about how the, the up-and-comers are going to make him seem like he's standing still next to them. I'm like, that's a great way to put it. Again, how will they address that? But, um, yeah, he had a good inclusion. I want to talk about the hook really quick because it was extremely brief and I didn't think anything of it. But looking back at it, were we supposed to know that that meant it was the Borg and we're just not smart enough? Like, were we supposed to see that crater and think, oh, it's the Borg? Because that's clearly what they thought. Did they mention the Borg? Because I know that they kind of just mentioned the Borg uh, casually. And they I didn't could, mention it in the hook. They didn't mention it before the hook. Okay. It was when they came back after the intro okay. in the scene with the guy and, and then they bring up the Borg. So if we missed that, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I don't think so. Because there wasn't a crater in, uh, in, in Q-Who. In Q-Who, was it? Yeah. That whole sequence of them on the Borg ship. I, I loved it in QQ and I loved it here. I love that set. Um, and everything was done really well. I like when they shoot the things and it like explodes. It was a cool effect. I guess one, not really a nit nitpick, I guess, but when uh, the Borg beam themselves over to the Enterprise, great fight scene, you know, Riker and Worf getting thrown around. They shoot them, they shoot them once, down. Shooting him a second time, already adapted. I'm like, oh, wow, that's crazy. But when the away team goes over, they're able to get, like, seven down. I get it. They adjusted their phasers. Did they say they were all... No, they said all the phasers were fine attuned to the same. Didn't they? Mm -hmm. So the fact that 
on their ship. I mean, I know they destroyed those nodes or whatever, and maybe that threw a monkey wrench in the system. But to take out like seven or eight like that, when earlier on, like after one, they're like, gotcha. I mean, I don't know what those nodes controlled. Maybe that's why, but. I think it was just for convenience of more bodies, more shooting phasers, whatever. I agree with you, but I'm it's just like, whatever. Like, you know, it isn't, it's like, okay. It's fine. And there was a really funny shot where it just looked like they, they literally went in a circle. Because the, the four Borgs standing up on the right, I'm, it's hard to tell the costumes look so similar with little minor details. I'm pretty sure it was the same I mean, four. Yeah, and it's obviously the one set where the Borg are standing that they don't have multiple rooms. Yeah, they're know. not going to build all these multiple yeah. rooms, no. Um, just a great, uh, when they first beam down to the planet and they show the crater, just that great... Uh, Matt painting. That great matte painting mm -hmm. and that great set that was also physical. They were there. And then just the, the Borg, just seeing the inside, not even seeing like a face of who the speaker is. I kind of like that. Yeah, I like that too. And I liked that whole idea. We talked about it in Q Who, how I was uncertain about a hive mind enemy. But I think, you know, TNG doesn't have it. And, uh, I, you know, I'm bought in at this point. I think the show has just done a great job of building up the Borg. You know, they didn't bring him back too quick. They dropped their name all season. And then to finally bring him back in the finale and make him even more badass than before. I'm um, really bought in. Um, would have been funny to see another Borg baby, but that's all right. <laughs> it just would have been a funny meme. Oh, if the Borg baby was like a toddler toddler now or a, a young adult. So like four Borg are walking and behind him like a little one follows. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would, be, that would be interesting. I like the scene with Troy and Riker. And them talking about it. I know we brought that up briefly, but I really enjoyed that. It was a great choice for it to be uh, Deanna. And even before that, right before that scene, I loved the scene with him and Picard, where Picard challenges Riker to reconsider, uh, you know, and basically can doesn't force him to take it, but he's like tells him all the reasons he should that Riker really has no argument for. Yeah, I agree with all those. And uh, I noticed it at first, but I noticed that uh, maybe it was a conscious choice because he did it like two or three more times. But I saw Riker do the old Picard maneuver a few yeah. times. I'm like, ah, that, that's nice. Shelby's getting in his head. He's like, oh, I gotta do what the captain does. <laughs> Be funny if we see uh, Picard do the the Riker maneuver. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> um, Guinan had her one scene. It was fine. It was good. Yeah, it was good really, scene with Picard. You know. Yeah, it was really good. It made sense they brought her back for the Borg episode. But I thought maybe she'd have a little more to do. And yeah, a little more involvement with it. But that's fine. Uh, most of the crew didn't have much to do because it was so focused on Riker. I mean, Worf gets to shoot some Borg and then, you know, gets pushed. Data doesn't really do much. Wesley has a deep voice. He has a deep voice, yeah. <laughs> Jordy does some engineering stuff and then mm -hmm. that's it. So it, I'm fine with it not being a whole crew episode mm -hmm. because it was so focused and we got a great story. Um, I, let's talk about the, probably the one you know, group scene, the poker scene was really good. Another poker scene to end the season. Yeah, to see Riker lose and what a great uh, tool to tell how this episode's going to go because uh, Riker's down, he you know, uses, you know, his, he's been bluffing every time we see him play poker, right? Like every time he bluffs and he always wins. So to see him do it and lose to uh, the up and coming commander, it's great choice. And I loved everything Data said in the scene. Just to see him go from not understanding it at all the first time we saw it, mm -hmm. all the way to now, uh, is just so awesome. He's still wearing his, his dealer hat. <laughs> yeah. And it was nice seeing Wesley there his first time in, at the table. And uh, I love the moment when he folds, he gives in to Riker's bluff. And then Shelby calls him, and then just Wesley's face. like <laughs> oh, Just like the disappointment. <laughs> Welcome to the game, kid. Yeah. And also, just great, uh, uh, another great metaphor. Um where Shelby, she's the one that takes the risky decisions, mm -hmm. and she's the one that calls the bluff. I mean, she literally even says, like, all I have is two pair, which is, like, one of the lowest things you can have. And she's like, but I got to see your card. Like, it was more so about taking the risk right. and knowing she'll probably lose, but ending up winning. It's, That's like, right. great storytelling. Michael Pillar wrote this one, usually the producer, uh, one of the main producers, and he came in and wrote it. I'm sure there was a bunch of people that helped or uh, whatever, but mm -hmm. got to give him credit for that. All around, I thought this was just, like, good ass tv like this was just really really good yeah it's tough trying to think of an episode to show to someone to watch the show i don't think i'd pick this one no, though. No. i was like tr trying to explain all this you so know. uh so, <laughs> so this is a cube uh. yeah th this works for someone for people who have seen who have done 180 reactions to star trek before this yeah, you know it's tough like trying to like hook people on a show i mean 
unless you're planning to sit down with them and watch every single one, but like try to pick an episode. Because would I pick the Man Trap as like, hey, you should watch, check out Star Trek, watch the Man Trap, assuming that they're going to watch that one and nothing else. Like, I, I would depends on the person. Probably, yeah. I think the Man Trap appealed to our what we like, a lot of what we like, mm -hmm. and so it was a good one for us as to where a lot of people might not have been a good one. Right, right. It is interesting. I always say like every episode someone's favorite. I feel like every episode is also someone's first episode that they saw of Star Trek. Ooh, so man. I would love to know if anyone out there, if this was your first one, how confused were you? Did it hook you in? That would be interesting. That would be really interesting. I mean, I feel, I feel like the show does a good job of uh, addressing stuff that's happened in the past. Like this is obviously not a two-parter, but a continuation of a story that was mm -hmm. established in q mm -hmm. Is that the name? Yeah. And there was a number of uh, references, not only to Q-Who, but just in general in this episode, so they were definitely leaning more into it. It's a great episode. I like the episode. Nothing here means I don't like the episode. Okay, <laughs> disclaimer. Um, I wish it wasn't so obvious to me what was going to happen to Picard. And, and you can tell me how you feel, because they kidnap him, okay. He goes over there, they explain to him what they want. They want, him, they want to use his voice. I'm thinking like, okay, so they, they want to assimilate him. I, you know, I even joked right when they took him, oh, they're going to plug him into the Matrix. You know, I know it was before the Matrix, I know. It's like they're going to plug him into the Matrix. And then to me, when they went over there and they pulled out the drawer and his clothes were there, I'm like, okay, he's he's the Borg. He's, he's going to be in the Borg. You thought it would have been too, you thought it was too much that they showed his clothes? if they did That was the that point out? for me. Although I'll be honest, even without that, if he, at that point, I already wouldn't have been like shocked. Like, it's a pretty, it's not that shocking of a thing. Like, once they kidnap him, it's like, maybe if they had kidnapped him and then there was a scene where he's, like, in a cell and they're like, we're going to use you for your voice. Like, something to maybe throw me off a little bit more. But knowing the Borg just from the one episode and then what they say to him when they bring him over, like, I was like, yeah, okay, they're going to probably make him the Borg. And then, you know, pull out the thing. Because they're a hive mind and what does a hive mind remind me of? It reminds me of zombies. And what do zombies do? They bite you, you turn into a zombie, right? So it's like, I, I just got that vibe right away. It probably would have been difficult for it to be completely shocking and the reveal itself is still awesome. Oh yeah. And we gotta talk about the last scene because we haven't really talked about that yet. But uh, the reveal itself was awesome. I'm not taking any of that away. I'm just talking about the pure shock value. If people were hoping for a, what, no way! I don't feel like I had that. And it's because I kind of knew it was coming. Like, I kind of was like, yeah, this is what we're going to see. What about what, did, what about you? Yeah, uh, back to the, the whole drawer thing. If just the communicator was in there, it would have been a little bit more effective, I think. Because obviously you put the communicator away so it can't communicate. Maybe would have we thought like, oh, because we don't need to know where the clothes are. Who cares? They, they threw them away. They don't need to put them in a drawer. That might have helped sell, sell me or like not sell me. Uh... Throw you off the scent? Throw, yeah, throw me off the scent. Did you see it coming? Oh, I've, I've seen them as Locutus before. Oh, you have? Okay. I, well, I'm sure. Okay. I've seen an image. You know, yeah. I've watched the Red Letter Media but you uh, didn't. Video. But you didn't know it was this episode. I didn't know it was this episode, yeah. no. But uh, as soon as, they, as, soon as they, they beamed over and kidnapped him, I'm like, ooh, I wonder if they turn him into... I even, that's why... I, I'm, oh, you knew the I, name. I, I knew the name, too. That's how you fucking remember his name. <laughs> like any other time, you wouldn't. I'm like, Ludacris? What's his name? <laughs> because I watched uh, Red Letter Media's... Uh, Videos about Picard, the TV show, mm -hmm. like years ago, yeah, you know, a while ago, yeah, and they, they mentioned uh, the Borg, Picard, the cutest, whatever, but didn't deter me from how awesome the reveal was of the Borg just standing there, and then Picard's head just coming in the frame, just looking normal, and then the mm, the turn to reveal the uh, Terminator mask thing, whatever. Yeah, the reveal is cool because it's a cool reveal. It's not cool only because. It's the most shocking thing in the world. I mean, if if they had captured anyone, that's what that would have been my guess. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't like shocked in that way, and I'm also not like sitting here thinking, "Oh, he's going to be this board character for the rest of the show." Like, no, obviously, they're going to fix it, and he's going to be Picard. You know, so it's like, I, you know, really cool design, really cool makeup, really cool. I love the red dot sight, uh, <laughs> and I, I oh, and I wanted to say too, I'm really appreciative how different the Borg are. Because a lot of them are on screen for like five seconds. So it's like they don't all have the exact same costume. Like they have little like changes about them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, 
I appreciate that effort. And then they took it to the next level with Picard, where obviously Picard is different because, I mean, he even gets a name, he talks, you know, so it's it's uh, moved up a level, but really like the design. I like those black pants. And also, and I, I can't remember if this was in q Who, but the update to the arms with all those, like, spinning gears and flaps going up and down. I don't know what they do. Like, we just <laughs> go brush someone's face with that. Ah! It, like, cuts you. They, yeah, they definitely give me, like... Uh, what are they called from Hellraiser? Xenobite? Xenobite? Cenobite? Cenobite? Yeah, they gave me vibes of that. Um, I remember one of my favorite... Uh, Cenobite? I'm pretty sure it's Cenobite. Yeah. Cenobite? <laughs> Cinnabon? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite Cinnabon design uh, was uh, in uh, Hellraiser... <laughs> three i think uh i've seen all of them a long time ago he can tell you about it <laughs> yeah i'll tell you the story yeah <laughs> uh, but one of them just had like a film reel as its head and it's like one of its eyes was like the, the projector i'm like oh that's sweet uh but anyway um yeah that that's probably my only negative with the I, I feel like they were going for a big shock and i wish they wouldn't have given me so many hints you talk about the elevator scene oh the tr oh, yeah, yeah and the triple lift uh with uh riker and shelby where riker like I hope it wasn't a physical threat. It was a threat, though. S yeah, snap her back so she'd be back like a... An ens a first-year ensign? A first-year cadet or something. Cadet, like, yeah. Whoa! It's like... <sighs> she did ask if she could speak frankly. And he said yes. And boy, did he... Boy, did she rip him apart to the point where I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go. Because I feel like if that was me, like... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but it's like... Just destroyed me as a human being. Yeah, I feel like he definitely hasn't been that aggressive i mean we thought he was kind of a bully to broccoli but i didn't think he was anywhere near what we saw in that turbo lift scene he was whew, cut deep because it was all true but also again not justified if it was like some type of physical threat but uh you know he is the number one and she did go around him in the chain of command he does have to kind of put her in her place she's a what was her purpose on this ship at first just to help them because they thought it was the borg I can't remember exactly what her purpose was. Uh, I was so excited the, to tell you that it was a doctor of Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> <laughs> oh, back to the, the turbo lift scene. I like how she's the one to go. Like, Riker halts it. They both give their, their flack to each other. And she's the one that goes, continue, decades. Oh, yeah. It's like, <sighs> God, lady. And he was left speechless. Yeah. Oh, just, just his face was just so baby boy. Just, it's like, damn, that smirk is gone. Yeah. Um, so to jump into a little bit of a prediction now, I don't know how much you can fairly predict cause I don't know what you know, but just strictly talking about season four, episode one, I don't expect this to be an arc that goes into season four. I expect it to wrap up in season four, episode one. I don't know how. And my biggest question is what are they going to do with Riker and what's the excuse going to be for why he's not becoming a captain and why he's going to be number one, the rest of the show. So I don't know any of that. Um, but I do expect them to obviously wrap this up. And I expect the Borg at this point is probably going to be the main villain of TNG. Like, that's my expectation. They've spent, I don't want to say two full seasons. That's over. That's overhyping it a bit. But a, a season two episode and now the finale of season three. And we're halfway through the series almost. So it's like, did they have the time to bring in something else? It's like, probably not. You'll always have Klingons and Romulans and the Ferengi. The Ferengi, yeah. <laughs> but, uh... As, like, this new big bad, I'm digging it. You know, it's, like, cool. Yeah, I like them. And uh, I'm glad they've grown past needing to use TOS. I mean, they still do, but it's not... They're not using them as the big-level threat like they were. They, they've grown past that with good episodes, like The Defector and the one with Jordy's down with the, the one Romulan guy. Because they built them up, like, so much in Season 1, I think, to... For, for them to debut in season two, or they debuted at the yeah, end of the season? Yeah, the finale, yeah. Yeah, so I'm glad they're, like, they're not using episodes, you know, with the naked now and all that. And uh, they've finally discovered, they've discovered their failure with the Ferengi. These people, these guys can't be our main villain. They, they can't be. It's not enough. So I'm glad they chose the Borg. But my season four, episode one predictions, they're going to resolve it in, in the first five minutes off screen and it's going to go to a new story now um yeah I, I have no idea what happens what the resolution is i just i've just seen the car is lacutus that's all i've seen before we started watching the and show. you knew his name was lacutus and I knew his name was lacutus that's all i remember i have no idea how it re resolves i have no idea what happens in season four episode one so i'm super excited for that after all that growth with uh shelby and Riker trying to become uh 
pushing Riker to be captain, or he's just going to stay there forever. It's like, yeah, what, what, what do you do? What's what? Do they become co-captains? I, I don't think so. Uh, they'll find some way to resolve the Borg. Maybe crazy. All these ships. Go, there's more of us, Poe. There's more. There's more there's of us. There's more of us. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he did say six days. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so maybe they'll come in and swoop in and save the day at the last second, but. Are we going to see Earth? The Borg close to Earth? That's going to be interesting. Let's talk about the ending scene. Okay. So, first of all, I loved how they mixed Picard's normal voice with the Borg voice, because mm -hmm. it wouldn't have worked either way. If it was just Picard's voice, that would have been weird. And if it was just the Borg's voice, it would have been weird. Mm -hmm. So I loved the mixture of it. I thought that was the right choice. Yeah. And I love the metaphor of Riker, in my opinion, still going with the safe choice. And even if it means killing Picard, uh, you know, it's seemingly, you know, that that's what he's going to do. Yeah, it was a great ending choice because if he made the opposite of the decision, uh, there uh, would it be a two-parter? Like, they could have still like, oh, we got to do it. What are you gonna do, Riker? Like, she could have said something, Shelby. You know, like, don't do this. Don't take the safe way out yet again. You know, you're right. Let's go get him. You know, to be continued. It wouldn't have hit as strong. That wouldn't have hit as strong. Yeah. You got to end down. You got to end on a low note. So you can end on a crazy good high note in the second one, hopefully. Yeah. Um, didn't cut. Uh, but, Riker said, make it so. Yeah? Yeah. He, he's, it was definitely a conscious choice of him pulling. It had to be. Doing all the traits. Yeah, doing all the traits, yeah. Now, if he did like that, I think he just said it casually. Because I think it was like, things are blowing up, things are blowing up. And mm -hmm. Jordy was delivering, or War for Jordy was delivering something. And it was like a quick, make it so. Like, not so, make it so. Yeah, look like, at the camera, wink, wink. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh... What I don't want to happen is season four, episode one starts up, you know, he had just said fire starts up like kind of showing the same scene, like, so to, you know, to catch you up, like fire, sir, the phasers are down. <laughs> and then like something happens and they just get out of the, that's what I don't want. Don't blue ball me. Yeah. What would they do? I'm, I'm curious. Like, I wonder if there's fire, press the, press the button, phasers go, they stop hovering in midair. Now, would that be the wisest choice? You know. <laughs> oh, a Q, yeah, a Q arrival? It's like, Whoa! And he's completely stopped the time outside of the Enterprise? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see, man. I don't know. I was actually kind of somewhat surprised Q didn't pop up in this. I thought that would have been the ultimate, like, you know, oh, the episode's not named Q, motherfucker, but here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? That'd, yeah. be, that'd be amazing. Um, but it would have said, <sighs> guest starring John DeLance, in the title. <laughs> yeah, probably would. I, I do have a bit of a hot take, I want to say. Oh. I think it'll be a hot take, just based on what we've heard before. This is obviously a great episode, so I don't know how hot of a take this will be, but this is not my favorite episode of the season. And I'll have to think about it. But oh, It's not mine either, so... I don't think it's top three, either. I don't know what it is yet, but... I love it as a season finale. It's a great cliffhanger, and on its own, with all the Riker stuff, is a great episode. In my opinion, there have been episodes that have been absolutely perfect of this season and like this one might be near perfect but th this is not my favorite and it's not top three um so i don't know it might not be top five i don't know we're gonna do our we're gonna do our list but i enjoyed it but uh yeah that list is gonna be crazy uh yeah it's gonna get a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of flack <laughs> um and speaking of hot takes uh i actually did watch the wrath of khan again believe it or not I just had some extra time, and I'm like, you know what, screw it, let's do it. I know we'll probably do a real video about it someday, but uh, I think you might be surprised about what I think, so... Um
or speaking of Infinity War, Endgame, dun, 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 <laughs> the portals, <laughs> <laughs> the trumpet, <laughs> portal opens and Spock steps through. <laughs> then, you see, then you see the the seventeen oh one A. No Rikers, Captain America. <sighs> and Spock's like. <laughs> The 1701A, and then Scotty comes in on, on the Galliello. You know, because... Of the, like, the oh, yeah, the shuttlecraft, yeah. <laughs> or, or I was just starting to think now, something even funnier. Instead of Spock, it's Kirk that walks out at first. And then, you know how, like, Falcon comes through? It's Spock with his rocket boots. <laughs> <laughs> it comes through the portal. <laughs> and, like, when they're, like, running to you know running towards it, Spock... <laughs> Oh, God, that's great. <laughs> and you know, like, the, the Spider-Man reveal, I'm picturing, like, not not swinging in, but someone, like, jumps in, he's wearing a mask, takes it off, it's, it's Harry Mudd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, every character, like that like that one poster, like, every character would have to show up, like, the Gorn, like, just everything. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Clint Howard's there, <laughs> still just on, on the bed. <laughs> yeah, but, but he looks like Clint Howard now. <laughs> yeah, or in 1990. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's good. 